Si sa, noi del sud parliamo a voce alta, si sa, noi del sud facciamo discussione in posta, siamo allergici alle strisce, di restare in fila non ci riesce neanche ai funerali. Si sa, noi del sud leggiamo libri a stento, si sa, noi del sud collezioniamo caffè a scrocco. Imbattibili nel lancio di parole dai balconi, siamo tesserati al club delle comari. Se prende spazio l'indifferenza, resta il silenzio di un condominio anonimo. Porta pazienza al perbenismo, io preferisco il rumore della verità. Si sa, noi del sud siamo sognatori inermi, si sa, noi del sud tiriamo il mondo a remi fermi, testimoni del principio elementare, che il riposo alla controre è sacro pure alle campane. Si sa, noi del sud facciamo a pugni con la storia, si sa, noi del sud... The light She's still beautiful. It is aquarium. Big. Aquarium. Big. Yeah, very big. Very big. It's, uh... Although we were pretty exhausted from our long journey from Southern California to Genoa, we walked the short distance to the historic Ponte de Mille terminal to get some overall shots of the Achille Laro before boarding. Her new dark blue livery looked a bit somber in the overcast lighting, but her sleek mid-century Italian lines were like music to the eyes. There was something about classically proportioned ships like the relatively small 23,629 gross ton Achille Laro that made them seem so much larger than their actual size. Our home for the next 12 nights was cabin P-52, a Category 9 outside with a window that faced the starboard main deck promenade. It was conveniently located in the center of the ship and just in case, close to the lifeboats. It wasn't exactly luxurious, but with an original chair from the ship's 1965 rebuilding into the Achille Lotto and a functioning bathroom with a shower, cabin P-52 would suit our needs just fine. The ship is about to sail. 
Up on deck as Achille Loro prepared to depart, we watched as Costa Cruz's Costa Romantica sailed off. Barely a year old, she was considered one of the hottest new ships afloat. And then with the last of our lines cast, we began to back away from the battered looking Ponte Andrea Doria. During every arrival and departure, the song La Nave Blue would be played over the ship's tenoy. This earworm was composed and performed by Mario Mari for the Achille Laro and her fleetmate Angelina Lotto when they operated on the Australian run in the 1960s. There were several interesting ferries in port that day, including the golden-hulled Corsica Regina. Built in 1972 as the Visby, she still operates in 2021 as the Sardinia Regina. The Flaminia was built in 1980 as the third Strata class ferry for Tyrrhenia. She was scrapped at Alang in 2013. The bizarre looking Petrorarca was built in 1971 as the fifth of eight Poeti class ferries for Tyrrhenia. Before four decks were added in 1991, she looked just like the 1978 built MV Deleda. In 1999, she became the Al Salam Petrarca 90 for Red Sea service. In June of 2002, she caught fire and sank. She was later salvaged and scrapped in India. One of the most historic passenger ships ever beckoned from the San Giorgio del Porto shipyard. Nina Cruz's Italia Primo was literally in the finishing stages of fitting out after a complete rebuilding. She was completed in 1948 as Swedish American Line Stockholm. In 1956, the Stockholm collided with and sank the Italian liner Andrea Doria with a loss of 51 lives. Of the same vintage as the Achille Lauro, she was another ship with a somewhat sinister or heroic, depending on how you interpret it, past. Turn them up and then change your role really quick. In a far corner of the yard, Silver Sea Cruise's brand new Silver Wind was fitting out. And at the harbor entrance, the American Adventure had just returned from an unsuccessful season under Costa spin-off American Family Cruises. The 1963 built ship was being returned to her Costa Cruises livery to continue sailing as the Costa Riviera. She was originally Lloyd Triestino's Guglielmo Marconi. The Costa Riviera was scrapped at Alang in 2001. As Genoa and our first day aboard the Achille Loro faded into the twilight mist, we headed back to the cabin, unpacked, ate dinner, and called it an early night. My old friends jet lag and insomnia coaxed me out on deck at dawn as Achille Laro hugged the Italian coast. With most of our fellow passengers still asleep, this was a good opportunity for me to begin documenting Achille Laro's interiors. I began with some of the first class spaces like the veranda on forward Lido deck. A grand staircase in the aft portion of the veranda led down underneath a canopy of clattering Murano glass chandeliers to the Arazzi lounge. A 
Along with my friend Kevin and I, a crew member with a vacuum cleaner was the only other person in the popular Arazzi Lounge at this time of day. The Arazzi Lounge was extended forward in the 1980s, expanding its capacity, but creating an awkward space with challenged sight lines. This would be as good a time as any to capture the chandelier from a reclining position on the dance floor. A large brass ceramic and rosewood art panel led aft from here on the port side to the Sorrento Bar. The Sorrento Bar had recently been expanded to the full width of the ship. The sheltered promenades continued aft from here on either side. As more and more people began to emerge, we decided to wrap up our interior documenting with the gym on starboard promenade deck. Out on deck, the sun loungers began to fill as Achille Laro approached Naples. Throughout the voyage, a trail of smoke over our wake emanated from her beautifully sculpted funnels. This haze and a constant rain of smuts may have portended the engine room fire that ultimately sealed her fate. I'll always be grateful to the Achille Laro for bringing me to Naples the first time via sea. Although industrial and maybe a bit grotty, the harbor was rich with history and at that time, numerous intriguing ships. The late up 1965 built Falerno would become a familiar sight during the next decade or so. Tirrenia's Manzoni, another overly rebuilt Poeti class ferry, was in dry dock after one of her sisters capsized, she was scrapped at a Lang in 2006. Built by Mussolini, Naples Stazione Maritima remains one of the world's most imposing cruise terminals. An old friend, Royal Cruise Line's Royal Odyssey, awaited us. She began her career in 1974 as the Royal Viking Sea and went on to numerous names. She still exists as the Albatross in 2021, having last sailed for Germany's Phoenix Sea Rison. The 1979 built Emilia was the first in Tirrenia's Strata class trio of ferries. She was scrapped at a Lang in 2006. At some point after we left Genoa, we apparently overcame the shiny new Costa Romantica, which followed us into Naples. The beautifully lit Romantica made an impressive pivot in front of Vesuvius before backing into her berth. Before much longer, we were off on excursion for my first ever visit to a place that had fascinated me for as long as I can remember, Pompeii. I love the I Heart Achille Laro stickers they gave to guests on excursion. All three of us would agree that sailing in this particular ship was an experience we will always cherish. To actually walk among the ruins of Pompeii after having read about it for so many years was a chilling experience. This sophisticated Roman city was destroyed in 79 AD when Vesuvius had a catastrophic eruption that consumed it in a pyroclastic flow. The private shrine, everything the property of a family was provided with a shrine like this. Nearby the fountain, Thank you, Achille Lato, for the experience of Via dell'Abondanza in the shadows of Vesuvius.
On our third morning, I was less interested in the Syracuse archaeological excursion than I was in getting good shots of Achille Laro from the one and only tender port during our cruise. la seconda colonia greca in Sicilia, la prima fu... Now we are crossing a bridge which is on the right, you see a little... Now, uh, we have uh, in uh, uh, Sicily and uh, one of the biggest uh, build at that uh, uh, time uh, this theater was built in the 30th century. My early awakening on the fourth day gave me a chance to start documenting the former tourist classrooms, beginning with the admittedly dismal Ischia Lounge. Functioning as a casino, this space was built around the basin of the Portofino Pool directly above. That crew member with the vacuum cleaner and I met again in the Scarabius Lounge on aft boat deck. This was the Achille Laro's main showroom. I would wrap up the boat deck spaces with the comfortable Sorrento bar just as the morning announcements began in no less than seven languages, including Dutch. I hope the ghost of Willem Rijs was listening. At some point, I finally did put the cameras down, but not until I had a chance to capture more of the Achille Loro's gorgeous deck areas. We enjoyed the ship for the rest of the day and then geared up for our first visits to Egypt, Israel, and Cyprus, which will be featured along with many more interesting ships in the next episode. <music> 
If you enjoyed this video and haven't already done so, please hit the like button, subscribe to the Midship Century YouTube channel, and perhaps even order our latest DVD, Torn Castle. For more information on Torn Castle and our other cruise ship videos, as well as fittings from recently scrapped cruise ships, please go to www.midshipcentury.com. Thank you.